So, you know, there's something that's both really very fashionable and deeply unfashionable at the same time, which is this idea uh, that maybe our lives have a purpose. Oh, uh, you know, big purpose. Big purpose. Well, you know, both that human beings have a purpose, mm -hmm. right, and that individual human beings have a purpose. You know, for at least the past 200 years, it's been very unfashionable in, in intellectual circles to think that human beings are anything but kind of noisy monkeys that were creation of blind chance. Now, of course, <laughs> in saying that, I'm not arguing even remotely against the theory of evolution, against evolution. Evolution clearly is mm -hmm. the case. But that begs the question of whether or not there's any particular role that humans are playing mm -hmm. in that evolution. And, and, uh, and on the individual level, it is sometimes romantic to think that we have a life purpose. Mm -hmm. But in general, I think our dominant uh, kind of idea is that there's no purpose to existence besides, you know, being alive, consuming stuff, having some pleasure, mm -hmm. and then dying as gracefully as possible. Mm -hmm. Do you have thoughts about any of that? Well, was, when I was, we were in India for the first time, <clears throat> there was the thing amongst those like 13, 15 of us uh, teachers, yoga teachers, going around parts of India. and. Uh, the big thing was, what is my svadharma? What is my true purpose in this life? I must, on this trip to India, discover the true purpose of my life. And they were like looking around continuously for this true purpose, as if it was going to be found under some rock or something. And you, know, you begin to look at that and say, well, now, what do you think you're doing right now? Yeah. I mean, the other side of it must be that right now what I'm doing is not my true purpose. There must be something else I'm going to do later that's my purpose for being alive. Because it's, when I have time. When I have time. Yeah. And I find it. I'll yeah. find it later. Yeah. So After clear. I retire, maybe. It's clear not what I'm doing right now. No. What I'm doing right now cannot be my true purpose in life. It must be something grand. Because my life right now is kind of mundane, or whatever. It's the presumption. And I'm just learning how to get my feet together and everything else. And my true purpose will emerge. It's coming. My true purpose is coming soon. It will come to me. Destiny at a theater Destiny near you. Yeah. Out there, some yeah. will arrive. In fact, I think as, as people run this path for all, find out that your true purpose is what's happening right now. I mean, this is your true purpose. And any place out of now, 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 as we made the video about like that, is you know away from your true purpose, which is to be present, fully aware, fully alert, and participating as much as you possibly can in the current moment. That's your true purpose. Right. And, and again, even if we just take that from an experimental point of view, say, I'm going to experiment with the idea that whatever I'm doing right now, when I'm in the present moment, when I'm present for taking a bite of food, when I'm present for brushing my teeth, when I'm present for, you know, holding my child's hand, when I'm present for anything whatsoever, I'm fulfilling my purpose. Mm -hmm. And we just try that. We just practice that. And... As you point out, it, it kind of, interestingly enough, detracts from this idea that there has to be some, like, you know, big, grand scheme, you know, that culminates in our being in Game 7 of the Stanley Cup or, <laughs> you know, something like that. But, ironically, and I, I would hazard a guess that many people who are pre in Game 7 of the Stanley Cup aren't there at all, mm -hmm. actually, aren't present for it, uh, in a way, and they say, what just happened? You know, wow, that was one of the greatest moments of my life. I didn't experience it. Mm -hmm. um, but the entirety of your life starts to take on this quality mm -hmm. of the seventh game of the Stanley okay. Cup. Because you're treating this gift of a life that you have, no matter what your point of view is, you've got to see that the life itself is a kind of gift that you get mm -hmm. to explore. And you're treating this gift of the life that you have with the attention that it calls for. Mm -hmm. But what, and if, and if you win the Stanley Cup, or if you win the Super Bowl, you get a big ring, you get to carry the Stanley Cup trophy around, then you say, that's it, my life has been a complete success now. <coughs> and you talk to people six months later, and you say, well, what are you doing now? Oh, my, my, my life was, you know, culminated <laughs> six months ago. And you say, well, what are you doing with your life now? Well, my life is, I'm done, I've reached my, my total purpose of my life. And they may have decades to live. It's like the rest of their life has no purpose now because they were focused on one thing. That event is over. It was kind of a yawn, really. Big excitement for a while, but then yeah. after that, not so much. And so now it's like, what's the rest of my life? And so to your very point, 
I mean, being here present now, 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 and no place else, it gives your life vitality, richness. It gives it its own purpose. Just as you say, holding your child's hand, not being any place else. You know, just being in the current moment, however mundane it may seem, is the most powerful thing you can do. Right, so the search for purpose is essentially a thought, mm -hmm. right, that just gets in the way. But at the same time, there actually is a purpose, mm -hmm. which is to be present in this way and to allow for the, un the evolutionary unfolding of consciousness, mm -hmm. in a way. That the, mo the more time we spend present in consciousness and not caught up in thoughts about what I am going to do or what's my next big break or how am I going to finally be recognized for the greatness that I am, <laughs> right? And you know, it's going to happen. It's going to happen yeah. later. Yeah, well at some point I've got, well, it's a complicated plan Gary, That's right. it's just but you play a crucial role I want you to know. <laughs> I'm not going to forget, okay? So I'm there. not going to forget where I come from. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> but that in that moment of actually being present, you feel that that's your, like, yeah. there doesn't need to be any content of a thought of like, aha, right. this is what I'm here for. Right. No, you feel its rightness, its essential rightness, but you have to spend enough time in it mm -hmm. for it to be anything but an anomaly. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and you never know when something is a big thing. I mean, it, yeah. it may, may be a very tiny thing, seemingly to you, but you have in some way perturbed the universe just by virtue of the way you act fully present in the moment. It might be the most important thing you could imagine, and yet it seemingly was unimportant to you. It may have impacted somebody else's life enormously, and they may go on to change many big things, or do many bad things, whatever word you want to use. But seemingly unimportant things may be incredibly important, and you just can't recognize it because you don't know what's going to flow out of that moment. And the flip side of that being that apparently very important moments that tend to pull us out of ourselves, mm -hmm. actually, you know, like I, this big deal that I'm going to do with this book or, you know, this enterprise, when we get pulled out of ourselves, they're actually less important than we think because we're so busy mapping the importance of this event or this achievement that we're not actually being present for it. Right. And so what occurs and we say, why was that so dissatisfying? You know, that was I, it. I spent my whole life <laughs> trying to finish that book and then I published it and that feels kind of like, eh. So what? That yeah. Was it? yeah. And, I, and I think that, you know, bearing that in mind is that each moment is equally precious, that mm -hmm. we cannot tell what you know, the purpose of any particular moment is, mm -hmm. except for by being in it. Mm -hmm. And that's our purpose, is to be mm -hmm. in that moment. And you can really feel that when you spend enough time in it. Mm -hmm. And you know when you're off of it, right? And that's the argument about, yeah. about compassion. We have this long discussion about compassion, where, you know, is this compassionate to just be focused on now? Surely it must be more compassionate to be worried about somebody else's welfare and helping them in a way you know they should be helped. I'm sorry, were you saying something? Else? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> but, but uh, we say this over and over again, but the most compassionate thing you can do, even for pe people who are very much disadvantaged over yourself, or more advantaged to you, is to be fully present in the moment. Because you bring to that a quality of action, a quality of presence that is so much more useful to them without giving a template that you're going to put on top of them and say, I know what's wrong with you, I can fix you, here's my model, you're going to fit into this model. Yeah, you, you fit in the five-part plan that I have <laughs> for the total rectification of the cosmos, right? right, uh, right. Well, it's funny because, um, you know, w w one of the people that I work with here, a good friend, he texted me a couple weeks ago and he said, man, he said, unbelievable the loneliness that I'm feeling. And I text back, texted back, great, now you know how God feels, exclamation point. <laughs> because what I discovered in my own, you know, inquiries was that that feeling of loneliness that I felt like well, it was a feeling of separation when I, when, when I would dwell with it, when I would be with it, what it really was was the feeling of oneness, of just being one, of being unique and being a stranger in a strange land. And I told uh, another person that I work with about that. She's like, oh, well, that's real compassionate. And it's like, actually, it was. It was. Because it's not compassionate to indulge our friends mm -hmm. 
in the nursing of their bad feeling when right behind that bad feeling, mm -hmm. what appears to be a bad feeling, is the best of all mm -hmm. possible feeling. And it has to be kind of burst through. It has mm -hmm. to be pierced through. And the only way you can get to that for another person is by just being present mm -hmm. for them. Instead of saying, oh, I know what I should say for him, or right. I know what I should say for her. But being totally present, it's as if the cosmos just speaks right through you mm -hmm. and says exactly what needs to be said to that person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he reports that it was helpful. But I do think that there's this misconception that compassion means always saying, right. it's all right. right. You know? right. No, it's not, it's not all right, actually, <laughs> to keep nursing this idea that to feel unique and one is to feel alone and terrified. It's right. the opposite. Right. You're feeling what it's like to be the one. And so often we give people a way around confronting, facing something. Yeah. If you can say to them, just welcome it in for tea. Mm -hmm. I mean, have it in for tea. This most terrible thing you think of, this lack that so many people feel inside themselves. They try to paper it over with activities of all kinds, pleasures of all kinds. In fact, just say, just turn around and face this great emptiness, this gnawing emptiness you have inside yourself, and just for the first time go into it. Yeah and see what is there. Yeah. Just entertain the possibility there could be a solution and what you see is a tremendous problem. And say, um, and also, uh, to whom were you directed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and look inside and find who's feeling this loneliness. Because exactly. exactly. that's what you have to do if you're going to set up the tea for the that's right. absent one and then yeah, that's right. the slightly less absent one. Yeah. It's like, oh, they're both absent, actually. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, it's really a, a beautiful thing that, that that by pursuing this idea that each moment's purpose mm -hmm. is to be present for that moment and it comes into existence and goes out of existence, that it's just fulfilled its purpose, That's right. then we're always in that present moment and we're fulfilling our purpose for each other. Mm -hmm. And when we do that often enough, it's unmistakable yeah. that that's what we're here for. That's right.